Hatshepsut reigned for 22 years. But the most amazing thing about her reign is that she aggressively pursued a policy of economic expansion. So she had ships, fleets, crossing the Mediterranean, establishing colonies, merchant colonies, in distant places along the coast of Canaan, for example, the city of Byblos, which is far north in Lebanon, that became a large Egyptian merchant colony. Eventually, they built Egyptian temples there to the Egyptian gods. She had ships sailing into the Indian Ocean and trading with India and uh, Persia and Southern Arabia. She built a tremendous economic prosperity, a great prosperity for Egypt, no war. She sent miners into the Sinai Desert. There was a, there were copper mining there, and a lot of industry was going on, work, business, trading, and so on. But, as uh, happens to all, eventually uh, she went to her eternal rest. Now, before that, she had her architect design and build her funerary temple, her burial place. It happens to be the most beautiful building in Egypt. It is glorious. It's a beautiful, well, you could say it's modern style. It wasn't the pyramid type. It wasn't a, a hole in the mountain. It was a building that was built with columns going up on three levels. And within that building was the, the burial chamber and a little burial chamber on the side where the architect made one for himself. So you see, it was a very interesting and complex situation, and also the relationship between the king, queen, and the, her architect, which is another story. But uh, the point is that he built this glorious building. It's really one of the beautiful. It's a place called Deir al-Bahri, which is across the Nile from Karnak, from Luxor, and it's right near the Valley of the Kings, but it's on the banks of the Nile. And there was, of course, a an avenue going from the banks of the Nile up to the entrance of the temple. Her statue was also uh, carved in bas-relief on the side walls as you entered. I'm pointing that out because there's something interesting about that too. Well, she died. She was buried. Ceremonies taken care of. The young man now becomes king. He's now 31 years old and as mad as hell because he'd been kept from the throne all these for 22 years. But now he's in full power, and of course, he's head of his mother's war party. So we know what he's going to do. He's out to conquer the world. Uh, it's interesting that he spent a couple of uh, angry weeks or months trying to annihilate her, annihilate Hatshepsut. And what he succeeded in doing is sending some men to chop her bas-relief uh, sculptures off the walls of the entrance to her tomb. So they chopped that off. Why? Because that would destroy her soul, presumably. But after a while, he said, enough of that. Let's get to, let's get to work.